when should we be on alert? And I'm not talking about the Cardinals per se, but because mm-hmm. once the, the stuff starts flying off the shelves, the Cardinals are going to have to get they're going to have to make something happen. Yeah. When, when does the action really start to heat up? What, what is the general timetable that we should look forward to? So this week, this week was the deadline yesterday, which was protection from the Rule 5 draft, right? So that is one kind of mile marker in the offseason. Um, Friday coming up is the non-tender deadline. That's another mile marker in the, in the, in the offseason because you have new free agents hit the market, right? And it's not like the ten, non-tender once was where it was a race to sign those. Now they just join in the flow of the free agents and – you know, teams wait for that now. You know, you don't see a whole lot of action ahead of that. Um, we have seen with the Cardinals a few times where they got a deal in place before that, such as um, you think back to, what, what was it? Oh, Stephen Matz, um, the trade for Paul Goldschmidt. Those are the most recent ones. Um, but for the most part, you know, the whole industry kind of waits for that non-tender deadline and the, the final, you know, flow of free agents into the larger market. Um, the other added twist this year is Yamamoto, right? Um, Yamamoto has actually like a time frame when he can sign. And that is going to influence some of this because he has a real deadline that these other pitchers do not. You know, Snell, Nola, all of they can wait till January. They can wait till, um, you know, February, even before spring training if they don't want to now or i mean if they don't want to sign that's not likely to happen but they can with yamamoto there's a 45 day window right he gets posted the clock starts and while it's not going to take that long it is going to take that you know it is going to at least take that initial move and the week that follows we're going to have to follow for the market to clear and if you have so many teams looking for starters and so many of those teams looking to talk to him about being that starter you have this like built in kind of freeze right now, right? Until it all kind of thaws. And then everybody goes, well, I can't, I can't go for the Yamamoto market or he's not interested in us. We got to pivot to somebody else. But it, it, that really is going to be what ignites the conversations for everybody. It seems. Do you, after after attending uh, and covering, I should say the GM meetings and John was like had a, you know, was a, there's good availability. You ask good questions. Uh, you wrote some really informative and also intriguing pieces. And, um, you know, I think we were all left with the same impression, you know, whether it's fair or not. Uh, it, 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 it wasn't exactly backtracking, but it, it, there, there was a little bit of, I don't know how to say it, change, not even about the payroll, but, but just sort of like, maybe adjusting expectations if that's the way to do it like the comment he made about well we need you know we need two starters and then you know then we'll see where we are and then he also made made it uh made it a point to tell you all that um you know but we're not saying like the two starters are going to be will you know each will be the guy in other words which would lead me to believe we're talking about top tier guys so i don't know what to believe now do you sense the expectations are have been adjusted already no. Oh, interesting. Um, really? No. I don't. I mean, I know he like. I, I see like this like shades of gray in what he says, right? Like, right. You know, he was, and I and I also really want to put more stock in what he was saying to like agents and other teams than maybe what he was saying to the reporters. Um, you know, like he was talking to player, or I'm sorry, to agents and teams and. Even I think mentioned this one, but uh, can't be. But I know he he brought it up to them, you know that he was looking for two and a half starters, right? right. Two and a half starters. And he in in talking with John Denton and me on the one day, he did kind of outline what would be a two and a half starter kind of move. And what he means by that isn't like oh you know they're not going to get that third starter or oh they're 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 tight, they're backing off their thing. No, it's. It's what I've tried to write about, and maybe I haven't done a really good no, job. No, you, you, you have done a good job with it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Is, is, that, is that half is a starter who, in aggregate, with help from, say, Zach Thompson or, you know, one of the other guys that they've added, right, Rom Hudson, those guys, in aggregate, they get 32 starts from that spot. 
but the guy they add, and they could add a guy at a high price, but they don't count on him for 30 starts because his career has been volatile. He's got an injury risk. Um, you know, it's a short-term commitment, and if it works out for he gives them 30 starts, magnificent for both sides. But if it starts up where he only gets 15, well, then those are the best 15 they'll get, and they'll cobble together the other 15. That's like that's how teams are viewing starters a little bit, and it's one of the one of the shifts that you could see the Cardinals make when it comes to cost. They have put such a hearty emphasis on paying for certainty with pitching. Right? They've just really been reluctant to commit multiple years to risks essentially, and all pitchers are risks. So they extend the guys that they have internally, who they know well, who they feel they can count on, who they've relied on, and then they try to go short-term for guys on the outside. I mean, you think about the number of multi-year contracts they've signed with pitchers. It's very minimal, right? I mean, it's, right. it's Brett Cecil and Mike Leak, and it, they haven't exactly worked out. And then they have the offer for David Price, and we'll never know how far that would go. But um, it's, it's a shift for them if they think, okay, we can add. And, and Mo talked a lot about this, and it makes sense. Is got to add certainty, got to add known quantities. They need innings. Who can they get two guys to just handle bulk innings? Now, in th- this marketplace, those are pretty significant guys. They're not just like quality start monsters because they're they're guys who are going to get paid hardy and they handle innings. Now, if you get those two guys then you it frees you up for that half, for that guy who maybe is a bit of a lottery ticket, if that makes sense, right? No, exactly. And you can go on the one-year deal or one-and-a-half-year deal. Well, not one-and-a-half, but when you're an option deal or two-year deal. And you can go, okay, look, man, this is your chance to start and come in, pitch great, but we want some <clears throat> protection if you get injured, or we want to have the option, if you're not pitching well, to use you out of the bullpen. And there are guys in this marketplace who fit that, too. Well, you know, and, and you, you did write about him uh, a couple mm-hmm. of weeks ago or so. I lose track of time in terms of trying to, like, time stamp stuff. But anyway, you, you went uh, uh, kind of a rundown of pitchers to, to look at type thing. Uh, oh, you, yeah, you, yeah. You, yeah. You, uh, you mentioned Nick Martinez, and that, that absolutely yeah. looms as a guy that makes sense for them. Yeah, he's got a new agent now, uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, from when the Cardinals last kind of made an overture towards him and and uh, and made strong. I mean, they made a strong impression. Um, I'm not sure, you know, the Padres ultimately signed him because of the opportunity that they offered him. So if, if I remember correctly, and I remember chatting with people who were really in the know on both sides um, at that GM meetings is where it kind of started. Um, but the opportunity with the Padres was um, – was better. It didn't turn out to be all that he hoped it would be, right? As far as starting all the time, but uh, but I don't think it was like that. The Cardinals lagged in the financial offer that they were willing to make. Um, he was right there, classic kind of move where he's coming back from Asia um, and had the chance, and so the Cardinals were looking there. Um, you know, another guy like that that I wrote about um, that I haven't connected to the Cardinals. I don't want to say that like I got a source telling me. Um, but another guy who would fit that profile and would be really interesting and also is uh, is high in the column that the Cardinals have prioritized is Lucas Giolito. Yeah, um, I, I like you know, that one too. Yep. Do you, He needs a bounce back year, oddly. Um, you know, you look back at last year and at the trade deadline, he was probably the best pitcher going. If it wasn't him, it was Jordan Montgomery. Um, but Lucas Giolito was pitching really well and then just had an awful second half. Um, How much of that was the trade? How much of that was being on awful teams? Or at least teams that were quickly going nowhere, which he contributed to, right? I mean, let's be honest. He contributed to that. But, um, you know, having him, a guy like that, I mean, he's got the second best strikeout rate of any free agent who's available, second to Snell. And he's a few years removed from being peak. But, you know, there's a guy who, if he's your half, Man, that might really work out to be a one, right? He, uh, I, I like him, and I think he's a he's a he's a really strong bounce back candidate too. And one thing, I oh, agree. I uh, I don't think I mentioned on the air, but I did put it in something I wrote. 
you know, I went and looked at just just his his days, uh, his years as a as pitching for the White Sox. I looked at his home and road splits, and boy, the home runs <clears throat> he he gave up. A, a, I forget. I don't have the stuff in front of me, but I know you take my word on it. Uh, he, he the 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 rate the rate of home runs allowed at home was so much higher than yeah. it was on the road. And you get mm-hmm. him in a place like Bush Stadium, which, which I think is playing maybe more fairly now, but it's still not what you would call a hitter's park. Uh, no. I just think that kind of change could actually bring out better results in him. Nor- kind of no- normalize normalize some yeah. of the things that are that are seemingly declining. You know, they're maybe not yeah. declining all that much. So go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm so glad you brought that up. I think so. I think that's exactly right. I give him a new home. He might see some new results. Um, you know, it's interesting because he gave up a lot of home runs. Lance Lynn gave up a lot of home runs. You kind of wonder if maybe the pitch comm was a little too loud there and the hitters <laughs> kind of knew what was coming or something. Something was weird with the White Sox. Um, but, you know, Lynn is also a free agent. But I, I think there's I think there's something there. And, you know, the, the, the quality of the pitches sagged a little bit. You can look into that on Baseball Savant. There's, those numbers are publicly available. Um, so is that usage, is that sharpness, is there something else? Is there something underlying there? Well, that's where it comes in where, you you know, you take the risk. And, you know, the Cardinals have – they shied away from chasing after Nathan Eovaldi, and it, that remains a perplexing decision for a lot of teams, not just the Cardinals. Um, yeah, there was a risk, but look at the upside. Look at the upside. And increasingly the market is rewarding that upside with dollars and salaries. And teams that don't recognize that and don't take that risk on a guy that, you know, maybe Lucas Giolito is that guy, then, you know, they, they, they're never going to strike it with somebody who outperforms their contract. It's just not going to happen with the way pitching is paid and where the pitching market is right now. How do you, um, how do you assess the bullpen? Um, Questions about Helsley. If he's available, he's terrific, but we're not sure what's yeah. going to transpire there. Uh, I, I've, I've talked about this a lot. I'm, I'm a huge uh, uh, admirer of Gallegos, but his uh, strikeout rate took a pretty big hit last year. His, home, his uh, you know, um, hard hit rate took a big jump. And I don't know whether he's just tired out. Uh, and I, I, don't, I don't know if he can regenerate, but – it just I, I just get a feeling that they're going to need maybe a little more uh, than perhaps they think they need. I don't know. Um, what do you how do you see it? I mean, they think they need two addition. OK, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry. Oh, a book club. Computer solitaire. Huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Do you think they need more than that? Well, it depends who the two are. You know what I mean? One of those deals. Yeah. Yeah, one has to be a late inning guy. Uh, For sure. um, You know, and then what they would have then is new player X. Helsley, Gio, and Jojo Romero as that kind of group, and that's rather compelling, right? Um, yep. I think that that's a pretty good mix. Um, now, can they get horsepower from somewhere else? You know, would be the question, and maybe have that be the sixth inning guy, maybe, or a or a chase reliever. Chase relievers are really valuable. Um, you know, Chris Stratton, for example, pitched as a chase reliever for the Cardinals. Um, you'd probably like a little bit more horsepower than he had, but you definitely want a guy who throws strikes and you start there. So there are free agents out there, like a Phil Maton. Am I pronouncing that right? I'm pretty sure I, I pronounced so, that right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, who's a local kid, you know, has, has postseason experience with the, uh, the Houston Astros um, and is exactly that kind of guy. You know, familiarity with leverage, durability, um, throw strikes, familiarity with – you know, chase relieving, setup relieving, all that stuff. Um, you know, he's available. He's a free agent right now. Um, you know, the Cardinals have expressed interest in. I don't. I don't know. I know that there are some relievers that are out there that the Cardinals have not contacted their agents. 
and the agent thinks that there'd be a good fit, or even maybe internally the Cardinals think that they're a good fit. Um, but they haven't really made that made that step yet, um, in part. And, and Mosaic talked about this is because they they expect the starting market to move quicker and their choices to be clearer there, whereas there are more options on relief that they can adjust to who's available at the time they then get after they get their starters. They 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 do not want to get into a spot where they where the music stops and they don't have a starter. They want to get their you know, they want to make concerted efforts to sign their priority guys. They want to be told no by them and they think that the pool of available relievers will still be strong when, when the dust settles on the starters. Well, it's going to be fascinating. Um, I can't wait for the action to start, but uh, the Cardinals, um, gosh, they, when you look at it, I can only imagine how, how Mozeliak and his, his staff feels. I mean, I don't feel sorry for him because they kind of created this mess that they're in, but uh, I look at this and think about that team, and I think, you know, play general manager in my head, not so much about identifying, oh, here's what I would do, but but just looking at all the, the – on the pitching side, all the things that need to be addressed and not in a minor way. And you're mm-hmm. like, wow, in a highly – a hyper-competitive market, and then maybe the cost of trades could could be rather painful. I don't know. They uh, It's kind of intimidating <laughs> to, to try to yeah. think of, like, what what the cost will be and where they'll wind up maybe having to take a different approach – you know, when when you got Jason Stark, who's really plugged in, uh, mm-hmm. you know, right, writing about how Nola turned down, you know, six years and 150 million in spring training, and and, it, and there was really no negotiations. I mean, they just broke it off, and right. you know, there's a there's a chance he could hit 30 million dollars a year, and I I don't I don't see Dewitt doing that. Um, I do, you know. Now I'm not saying it's got to be him or Bust. There's some other guys, but. It's just uh, – it's going to be kind of nuts for them knowing the way – what their philosophy is about spending big on starting pitching. And I'm not defending it. I'm just saying I understand it. It's got to change. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know how to put it any other way. It's got to change or they got to change what they're trying to do. Like, they're at a spot right now where it almost – and I asked Mo this. I was like, is there an outcome where you, the market just runs by you and you go, all right, we're going to scale back, and it's time to rebuild and rethink. And, you know, that they, they won't contend for 2024. He says that is not on the radar. So what is? What is on the radar other than you have to change that approach? If you are going to catch up, if the Cardinals are going to catch up, it's not going to come from within. They don't have the pitching to help them from within. They know this. They know they have to redo how they develop and how they deploy pitching. If they're going to contend, then the only thing that they can change to then um, catch up is how they approach starting pitching and what they're willing to pay for it and the risk they're willing to take on. You know, I don't know what I don't know what the fan reaction will be like if they go out and get a 30 million dollar a year pitcher and they go out and get another 22 million dollar a year pitcher. And both of them end up on the injured list with shoulder trouble because right. pitching is violent and pitching is volatile. I don't know what the fan base's reaction will be, but it, it at least shows that they're different, that the Cardinals are trying something different. And if they have rebuild forced upon them after trying to spend them, then, you know, they made every effort. I think you have to be aware that they changed and they modernized. Um, you know, one of the things that, like, we talk about a lot is you know modernizing pitching approach right pitching labs and pitch crafting and, and sweepers and all this stuff right and that's all real and true but also let's not ignore the like one area where the cardinals haven't modernized is spending on pitching and <laughs> no, every amen. time that they yep. talk of, yeah every time they talk about modernizing that has to be part of the equation and i, I and it's not that they don't know that you know, I mean, the front office has lobbied ownership for spending on pitchers, for some risk taking on pitchers. And, you know, it's their job to lobby for that, and it's their job to successfully lobby for that to then have a good team. Um, but it's also ownership's job to go, you know what? The market has changed. You think back 20 years, and Phil DeWitt Jr. recognized 
that the market was about to change and got ahead of it, right? Lou now right. comes in. Eventually, Mo- Mosellock's role at, under Jockety, even some of the moves Jockety made, look, they, they recognized that those kind of deals where they could take on salary, Walker, McGuire, Edmund, you know, Roland, all those guys, that those things were going to vanish, and they had to change their model. And they did so ahead of time. They were ahead of the curve on that. Now they're behind the curve on it. And the way to catch up universally in baseball is to spend and spend wisely. And it's those two things. Cardinals cannot show off how smart they are at spending until they get the approval to spend. 100%. But I, I, I really, really question whether they're going to make that breakthrough. Of far really don't know. Yeah, they, they don't have know. to change, change their philosophy on that. I do know they, that I'm wait that that agents are really eager to see it too. You know, they they see the comments, um, they speak to the Cardinals, they hear what they want to do, and you know, universally, the agents that I spoke to were like, if they do it and they have it in them, that will be very interesting. There will be pitchers who are interested in them, but they have to do it. Absolutely. Derek, I need to go. I, I, I knew we, I, I anticipated that we would have a, a you know, good long conversation. So thank you for that. And, yeah, you uh, bet. We'll be watching, uh, watching out for you on Twitter at D Gold and, of course, reading at stltoday.com and St. Louis Post Dispatch. A lot of thank work for my so- colleagues this week. So look for their, their work there. Oh, yeah. And Lynn uh, Worthy. Lynn I don't Worthy's- have as many of those assignments. Lynn Worthy's good, man. I, I enjoy his work. So, and I know, yep. and, you know, and a uh, big fan of uh, Ben Fred, too. So, thanks, man. Yep. Yep. You see, bet. Have see a you great buddy. week. See you, buddy. That's our friend Derek Gould. And what Derek, before we take a break here, what Derek said is, uh, you know, 100% right. Uh, and, and I'm not trying to, now I'm going to be the guy that I make fun of, like the smartest guy in the room type. But, no, I'm not trying to be that guy. But I was writing about that during the regular season a lot. It's like, look, let's re- retrace the Bill DeWitt history. He was way ahead of the curve. Like, in, in especially when you compare him to the other owners in baseball, he, he was actually in the lead. Uh, may, maybe the dude in, in Tampa who, who, you know, it was a different time and place for them. And it was also because they a lot of it was had to do with survival because they had such a small attendance. But – Bill DeWitt was way, way ahead of the curve as far as understanding how there's a better way to build a roster. There's a more payroll efficiency really matters, but you got to you got to start funneling really good talent to your major league team. Then you pick your spots for big spending, and it the, so the whole scouting, drafting, developing uh, machinery worked great for them. And a lot of it had to do because the owner was the leader of all that. It was his initiative alone. And it even cost him Walt Jockety because Jockety just couldn't stand the idea of, you know, um, and I'm not knocking Walt. I'm Walt's a friend, and I understood how he felt. But the thing of it is, Bill decided we need to do this a different way because we can't count on being able to make these trades where we, we the market's changing. And he read that correctly, Bill DeWitt, where it's like, you know, we got Mark McGuire for nothing. We got Edmonds for, you know, virtually nothing. We picked up uh, Chris Carpenter when the Blue Jays didn't want him, and everyone was saying, oh, well, you know, he's, he's shot. His shoulder's bad. It's never going to get better. Uh, they picked up, you know, they, they traded for Daryl Kyle for next to nothing. I mean, I could go on, even even the Renteria trade. I mean, i go on and on and on. That was a time where teams were like, well, the guy's in his walk year. We might as well get something for him. So they, they, their demands were, like, basically very, very minor. And the Cardinals cleaned up on that. And there's still people that it amazes me that they think you can do that now. You, can, you really can't. Um, the market for pending free agents just is not, uh, is not lucrative as far as return compared to when Jockety was a GM. Jockety, at that time, was, was an ideal general manager for that system. But Bill, De, Bill DeWitt recognized that system's changing fast. And we got to get ahead out. We got to get out and head in front of it. And he did. And, uh, man, I, I know I've written like two or three things about this and talked about it on the air a lot. Um, you know, can he change again? Can can he break – can he can he own up to the fact the model's broken? It's no longer 
uh, functioning the way it used to. So you can't stick with it. And part of that is you have to understand the pitching market and the money that's being spent. And so you're either uh, you either um, change your ways and you put a huge emphasis on re- redoing the whole way that you draft, develop, and you, you draft and develop pitching. And that's going to that's going to be a humongous endeavor. It's going to take a couple three years to even start to show my like results. The beginning of some results. That's not a one off season thing to fix because it means replacing people, bringing new people in, upgrading technology. Uh, there's it, there's a lot involved, but they lost their way because they they lost their system of evaluating pitchers and developing them completely changed and it went kaput and so when you allow your strength like that to unravel and that's your doing it's nobody else's when you allow that part to fall apart well you have to spend then that's see that's the predicament they put themselves in the way you were doing things for a long time and you were ahead of most organizations is you always had pitching coming, always good pitching on the way. I talked to Theo Epstein about that one time. He says, man, we look at the, we look at the Cardinals pitching. I've talked to other general managers. And it's like, how do they keep doing that? Like, you know, they get these guys when they draft them. Like, well, why did they draft them? You know, and, and he said, then, then the guy becomes someone really good. And it's like, what are they doing, you know? Um, it was a source of frustration with, with uh, the Cardinals' rivals. And I know that for a fact because I talked to those guys. I talked to a couple of the guys in, in Cincinnati about that too. But they're no, in fact, they're, they're now way behind everybody in this area. Well, they let that happen. No, like I said, no one else is at fault. They let it happen. So if you're like, well, we've got to win, you know, oh, our goal's got, got to win right away in 2024. Oh, no, no, no. No, we're not backing off that. We're going to win, win right away. In 20. Well, how are you going to do it? I mean, if you're going to go down a tier, you know, like if there's five tiers of starting pitchers and you're going to shop in the maybe one guy in the third tier, maybe one in the fourth tier, um, I don't know, you, you get a swing man, so to speak. I mean, what? Yeah, your pitching will be better because it can't be any worse than it was last year. And I do think that they'll add enough depth to, to protect themselves there too. But how do you do this instant turnaround unless you're willing to spend to the, whatever the market value is at the time? It's no different. It's no different in principle than if you go to the store and you're like, "Man, I can't believe the cost of this. Uh, I can't believe the food price." I'm just using a, a loose hypothetical. I didn't think this one out. Um, like when gasoline was high, man, I can't believe these gas prices. So what does that mean? So instead of saying, man, I hate this, but you pay it, you know, because you, you you drive your car, you need to drive your car. That's how you get to work. That's how you do everything. That's how you get the kids to soccer practice. What are you going to do? You're going to just sell your car and write it off? So I don't know. I'm not going to have a car because of this. What do you do? If you don't, you're not willing to pay, even though it's hard to take and you're really ticked off about it, what do you do? You just say, no, that's it. Not driving a car anymore can't do it <laughs> or you know you can when you go shopping for your uh, miss bernie's always keeping me up to date on like some of like the fluctuating food prices you know you can't go in there and say uh hypothetically and this was true a few months back or whatever i cannot believe the cost of eggs i cannot believe the cost of a dozen eggs now it, are eggs like oh you have to have it to stay alive no but the point is if you make breakfast and eggs are a part of breakfast, and especially if you have kids at home, whatever, whatever it may be. So what do you do? You, no, I'm done. I'm done forever with eggs. No. <laughs> you might wait uh, to see if the prices drop, and then, you know, maybe you start buy them, buying them as often as you used to. But what do you do? Well, the same thing applies to pitching at a much greater cost. You let your pitching well run dry, developmentally and so now it's like you're in dire straits you need this you need this you need that and the price all indications are the prices are absolutely going to skyrocket so what do you do 
You kind of fold your arm and say, no. No. I mean, they can do that. I don't know if it's going to get them ready to win in a uh, big way in 2024. If they do that, I doubt that it will. That's why I want, you know, the messaging. I understand saying, no, 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 2024. We're determined. We haven't changed our thinking. Well, in my opinion, uh, that stuff sounded good at the time, played well with the media, including me and and fans at the time, most fans, a lot of fans. But we talked about this the other day. Does that really make sense? If you're not going to go in big with to get at least one high-end starting pitcher, at least one, then what are you talking about? What are you talking about, you know, kind of restoring what was lost in 2024? What are you talking about? How? how? It's just, uh, you know, it seems to me this might be more of a two-year thing. But they're not going to say that because they think everyone's going to revolt. Uh, I think pe- I think you got to give people the you know, credit for being intelligent. That they they see the situation. They know it. They they know everything can't be fixed at once. It might be more of a two year deal, which doesn't mean you're going to lose 100 games next year. I'm not saying that. It doesn't mean you're going to lose 91 the way they did this past season. But as far as like, oh yeah, see, we got a World Series roster. No, you don't. Not, not with, uh, like, a kind of hodgepodge rotation, even if you have more of those kind of pitchers, which is, is, a, is a plus, but it's not what you need. So, I don't know, I'll shut up now because I could go on and on and on about this. 